Hello everyone, my name is Hayden Danielson and I'm the Senior Onboarding Coach here at Tavuti. In this walkthrough, we'll be reviewing everything there is to know about courses in Tavuti. Let's check it out. Courses are the main driving force behind delivering content to your users. While Tavuti uses a three-tiered structure to help you organize your content, namely through categories, courses, and lessons, courses often provide users with the primary context for what they're going to be learning about. Let's talk about how you can create or edit a course. Head to your Learning tab, followed by the Courses tab, and then you can either hit the bright green New button or click on one of your courses that already exists. The Overview tab is where we are brought to first. We can determine the course's name, categories that it should belong to, and pricing if applicable. It's important to note that every course must belong to at least one primary category. Otherwise, your course will not be visible to your users. The Design tab is where we tackle many of the aesthetic details for the course, such as the thumbnail, cover image, description, and custom labels down below. Back up at the top, the Content tab is where we can organize the lessons attached to our course. Think of lessons as like chapters of our course. In addition, if we need to send users to an outside resource through this course, we can enable an external link to get them there. If you send users to an external link by clicking on the course thumbnail, no library content or lessons are included in the course, and we can see this in practice by toggling this back and forth. Another option is to introduce library content, such as a biz library package or an e-learning package for the course. Choosing this option makes this package the main piece of content for the course and eliminates the option for additional lessons within the course. Lesson gating is a handy tool if your course is broken down into multiple parts. If enabled, this means that users will need to complete content in the order that it's presented down below. You can also create new lessons, add existing lessons, or edit the attached lessons by using the lesson organizer at the bottom of the content tab. If you need to reorder the lessons in this list, simply click and drag the three dots to the left of the order column. Going back up to the top, the time schedule tab allows you to designate various dates, such as opening dates and due dates. Due dates can be configured for a specific date or after so much time has passed. And you can always toggle that back and forth. Hard due dates act as closed dates, meaning that users cannot access the course once the due date is reached. This is completely optional. You can always toggle this on and off depending on your needs. The Permissions tab allows an administrator to specify who exactly will have access to the course, such as a user group, specific users, access levels, or courses can be set up with no restrictions as well, meaning that everybody across your platform will be able to access this course. Courses can also be locked under this tab, which means that until the course is unlocked, users will only be able to see the course's thumbnail and cannot access the content within. The Learner Progress tab will showcase who all has engaged with the course including important metrics like progress, dates such as the date that it was started and completed, additional comments, and other key information. One important tool that you can use here is archiving course progress as shown right up here at the top of this chart. First, we would need to select the learners that have engaged with the course, and then the archiving button becomes available in bright red. Archiving someone's progress essentially hits the reset button for them, allowing them to take the course again from the very beginning. The Advanced Settings tab provides an area to attach some of the additional features you may want to use to spice up your courses, such as course events, final course surveys, and other key details. There's another useful tool here, which is enabling admin notifications upon completion of the course and awarding points to users for completing the course. Finally, 
The Translation Overrides tab provides opportunities to override the typical descriptions, videos, and other resources for multilingual speakers. If we switch languages, you can even choose different e-learning packages for the various languages. Also note that as you switch between these, any details that you put in for one language will save and you can continue on down the line to other languages. That way you don't have a constant running list of all of the multilingual options. You can just pick and choose which ones you want to edit at any given time. Once you have a number of courses created, the focus then shifts to managing your courses. Let's talk about some best practices and other tools at your disposal to help manage the courses you build in Tabuti. There are a number of filters and searching options available to you at the top of the courses page. You can find courses based on the category that they're tied to, the creator of the course, or you can use the advanced search option to go even further. The various columns can also be selected to prioritize a certain area that you're looking for. For example, we can take a look at something based on their published or unpublished status, their title, the number of lessons they may contain, and so on and so forth down the line. It may be necessary at some point to reorder your courses. To do this, we need to use the ordering column to sort the courses by the order in which they currently appear to the user, right over here on the left-hand side. From there, just like reordering your lessons in any given course, you can reorder the courses to appear in a particular order to your users by clicking and dragging these three dots or by entering the specific number in which you would like it to appear. Always remember to click the green check mark once you're finished to confirm your new ordering. Duplicating courses can also have a number of benefits. If you need to change a few key details for a course and perhaps you're providing a similar version of the course to a new user group, Duplicating the course can save you a ton of time. To do this, we would click on this little check mark next to the course, click the duplicate button, and now we have our copy. Duplicating the course will carry over all of its details. The only exceptions are the course events that may have been tied to the original course and the lessons in the original course as well. Lessons are not copied because they too may need to be tweaked a little bit to fit your new duplicated course. However, lessons can also be duplicated and tied to other courses, just like we did right here. It's also important to note that the duplicated course will have the word copy following the title. That way, admins don't get confused when looking at two courses with a similar title. The duplicated course will also be unpublished by default, so that it is not accidentally marked as published and available to your users until you're ready to send that out. Again, courses and the management of them provide the backbone for users' e-learning experience. Utilizing the multitude of tools at your disposal will ensure your learners have an organized, well-planned, and enjoyable learning path while on your platform. Thank you all so much for taking the time to understand courses in Tabuti. We hope that this information is helpful as you continue to build out your one-of-a-kind platform. We'll see you all next time.